Look out, footy's back. G'day, I'm Shane Wakelin. No, I'm not Shane Wakelin at all. I'm actually James Clements. I'm the host here at the AFL Today Show, your new favourite one-stop shop for all things Aussie Rules footy. That's right, it's the Midweek Madness Show. I love a good Wednesday show. I'll tell you what, there's a lot to talk about this week as well. Joining me for the Midweek Madness Show, of course, is a couple of local footy nuffs. Some would call them AFL experts. I don't know if it'd be me. There's Alex Donnelly over there. I think I'd prefer to be Daryl Wakelin than Shane. I prefer mm. the name Daryl over Shane. Really? Yeah. Really? Because, no, because Ugh. you've already got Shane Warren. Daryl! <laughs> yeah. nah, I'm out. But it's I also, want Shane the but it's also you've already got Shane Warren, so you're not the best Shane. That's you could true. be the best Daryl. I don't know. There's a couple of good Daryl Darryls. Braithwaite. <laughs> exactly. Daryl Summers got Victorian of the Year or something yesterday. <laughs> yeah, what was that about? <laughs> The world's biggest Daryl Summers fan in the middle here, Stats yeah, Boy. I absolutely love A8 Saturday back in the day. Were you alive um, when it was on? No, but I saw a lot of reruns, that's for sure. My fair, You're about family. the size of Dickie Knees. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he liked that one too. No. All right, so subscribe to our YouTube channel and you know get around all the AFL Today socials, get all the good stuff. The cool part is we are chockers this week because footy is back in a big way. Let's do some news. Oh, There's a lot. There is a lot. David Schwartz says uh, Dusty's off to the Gold Coast, stats boy. Apparently. Forget David Schwartz. I want to know what David Neitz reckons. Just get some other Davids. <laughs> other Melbourne players. Yeah. Let's go. Just yeah. dig into all the Davids. I'm just like, David me. Come on. So what David Neitz at a pub in South Melbourne. What does David King think? David King? Yeah, well, I'm sure oh, he'll say David something on David King would have all of his numbers and yeah. stats as to why it's a terrible idea. Anyway. Well, one thing I, I saw about Tom Morris report, reported that he only has three options. He's going to retire, go to Gold Coast, or stay at Richmond. Thanks, Tom Morris. There's only three options. What, what are you talking about? That's Elder like the three. angriest stats guy's gotten. It's I just, great. I can't even be bothered giving energy to that. He's reported the only three options that are going to happen to Dustin. Well, that's fine. <laughs> By the same token, would you go to the Gold Coast if you're Dustin? Oh, yes. He could, he's going to get a lot of money for it. Would he? Yes. Are you sure? I'm guessing. They had to kick Jack Bowes out because they have salary cap issues. I reckon if he goes there, Dimmer will yeah have to give him a lot. He won't go there if they. He would never but also, go there. This is where the salary cap money. guy goes. Yeah, Dimmer, we got fifty bucks. Yeah, and he loves Dimmer. I th- you I you think, want to re-sign Noah Anderson for seven years? I you want this, stupid, sexy Flanders, or you want Dusty? I said this before round one. I think he's going to go there. And, yeah, for money though. I think the only reason he would go there is for the money. I'm going if Gold Coast have a look at it and see how he's gone this year. They'd be like, Nah, we're good. Ooh. I think I'm fine with it. I'm just like, don't bother. Yeah. You're a legend already. Be a one club player. It'll be awesome. You'll be fine. I think it's a bit dumb. If you want to go Gold get Coast warm, well. just move there. Yeah. Like, no do one buddy cares. Did. Just buddy do moved. It. Yeah. Exactly. Simple as that. Uh, Dusty the Gold Coast. Nah. Sure. Gold, I don't care. The other one is Gold, Gold Coast really do that? No. That's what Dusty's I'm saying. Cool. They yeah. shouldn't. They don't I need think he him. will because just of Dimmer and stuff like that. I'm not saying Gold Coast should. Yeah. Or Dimmer just goes, Daniel Rioli. Yeah, that's a better pickup. Why not both? Mm. I saw some idiot say that some, someone should give Richmond number one the pick, the first pick in the draft for Noah Bolter. I was just, I, whatever I was doing, I just was like, this. <laughs> you got to get off Twitter. Time. That is just <laughs> yeah. nah. Yeah, it's too to- that's just horrible. Uh, <laughs> I love the idea of Dusty just retiring as a tiger. I think it's yeah. fine. You yeah. don't need to go to the go go to the Gold Coast. Like, what do you have to prove? Do you want another payday? I'm sure you can make up that money. It would be fun. Is anything? Hey, Max King, he's out for the season. Yeah. Oh, oh, geez, St Kilda's season is done. <laughs> Well, it was already done. Now it's even more done. This is more cooked than one of my old man snags at but, this point. Not that he's is been this... doing anything, to be fair, but just that big target up forward is going to cost him. Also, it's like if it was something that's, it looked, it could have been like a four to six week injury. And they're like, eh, there's eight weeks. This is a soft tank so we can get pick number four in the draft. I, I reckon it's secure. <laughs> they, they might get no, jump by other reckon, teams. Uh, maybe. I reckon maybe. they'll be pick four because what? North Melbourne, North Richmond, Melbourne West Coast. Tear, West Coast could How still pass. How many games have secured Richmond? Like four? Five? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, my question soft, here is soft tank. My question is: Does Ben King feel the pain in his knee as well? Yeah, that twin just instinct. Saying. Yeah, just saying. Possibly. Just want to know. Spider senses. You just go. Oh, what was that? <laughs> well, if he does, then he's calm and dreams are done. Anyway, speaking of the Gold Coast, yeah. Witsy is also got a fractured vertebrae. Oh. Yeah, so the dangerous weapon known as Darcy Moore's knee. He's um, done three injuries apparently this year. Yeah, now. Pat- he murdered Petrarca. Yeah, well, obviously the Petrarca one. I don't know what the other one is. Yeah, I can't remember the other one. There was like, there's been a couple where. He just, just need people and just destroy I, them. I, I did enjoy the reporting was like, oh, yeah, so witsy has got a fractured vertebrae. And someone's like, oh, yeah, Jared Witz has fractured his vertebrae out of the contest where Darcy Moore's knee was into his back. It's like, this is what happened. But then Collingwood fans are like, but no one else has reported it like this. Why are you doing this to Darcy Moore? This isn't fair. It's like, because it's newsworthy. Because yes. three weeks ago, Christian Petrarca could have died. Him. Yeah, could have died. Exactly. Mm. It's I an extreme it's, length, but, you know. I think it's more about how Collingwood, like, just – 
well, I know the hallowed tradition of all of them being a war criminal is just undefeated. <laughs> Even Darcy Moore, he's a good bloke seemingly, yeah, see? yeah. also a war criminal. I don't make the rules. <laughs> you play for Collingwood, war criminal. <laughs> that sucks for Witsy though. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but Mo- that means Moyle comes in and he's actually, I think he's a good rucker. How's Moyle going to go against Witsy this, uh, not Witsy, Cherry this weekend? Oh, Cherry will absolutely destroy him. He's the best uh, rucker in the comp. He's like fifth. Uh, but Witsy, it is a real sort of just kick in the guts, like, well, a kick in the back, kick in- <laughs> uh, as it were, because he's just a really important comp. Yeah, he's a great Witsy. player. Yeah, and he's really good. Love Witsy. So that sucks. Can you play without a vertebrae? Let's find out. That's <laughs> Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Charlie Cameron's got a three-year contract extension, and so does Jared Berry. <laughs> Love that. Cool. Five years. For Jared I don't know Berry. if Jared Berry deserves five years. Yeah, but five that's is a the long year three. Time. I know, but yeah, that's what uh, players are getting way too long of uh, yeah. contracts. I don't, I don't like it. We're considering your sign for the next three days, and that's it. <laughs> yeah. so. I, I'm happy with that. That's longer than Alex. <laughs> True. The vibe, though, for the look, I'm I'm all about this though. The contract length, you know what I mean, is yeah. a bit ridiculous. There's a lot of eights and fives, and, and every team right now is sort of going, "Ha ha, we're going to load up," mm. and all the players at some point will go, "Hang on a second, we could be wake, making way more money in four years' time." Actually, but yeah, a lot of these sucks. contracts are built in. It's like you're getting X amount PE, which is eight percent of the salary cap. Yeah. You will continue will to get up, that right? percentage yeah. of the salary cap yeah. as it yeah. goes on and on. Charlie Cameron's the smartest three-year contract extension means does he come out at the end of 2027? Who's coming in in 2028? <laughs> Stats boys, new team. Everyone's yeah. going to Tassie. But that's, no, but that's what I mean. No, it's have your contract end that year because you have the yeah. leverage if leverage. you're a decent player. Leverage, Whereas son. Jared Berry signed on to the end of 2029 or 20, 2030. Yeah. Just yeah. in time for the NT. Yeah. Uh, ball tracking chip. Yeah. Let's do it. We talked was, about this when you went to the, uh, what was it, the technology We conference? said this at the start of the year, though. Like, yeah. Let's do it. It was great, and they were talking about how they're going to use it for the AFLW season. It looks like that could actually be happening yeah. now, which is very, very cool. It's going to be great to see that at Frankston. It's also weird that they're like using these weird old examples where they're like, hey, check out this. It's like Isaac Rankin when he played for the Suns. Yeah. yeah. What is going on? Just here? use something a bit more. But maybe it's, the video, replay- like maybe it's like. the video replays. Maybe it's the video replays they've got. They just couldn't be stuffed use cutting from, up a new thing. Use it from the first four rounds where every show were like, that was out of bounds. <laughs> that was clearly out of Well, bounds. that's what I want. I want to know if we're going to have, as a part of the out of bounds technology, like the sort of like, semi automated yeah. offsides we have in soccer. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Uh, so that's good because I want ball tracking. Yeah. Why it's not? simple. We, it's not hard. It's not rocket surgery. And it'll actually said. improve our uh, technology, which is horrendous. Yeah, it never hasn't, hasn't improved for a long time. No. Other bits and bobs of news. Laura Kane apologised to Brad Scott for bad umpiring <laughs> as the Bombers. She's literally like so, called out on, one of the coaches. On top of this, on top of this. So they basically came out and were like, oh, we're not going to do the Monday thing because it keeps throwing ourselves under the bus because we all look like idiots. Yeah. Yeah, so we're not going to like talk about contentious decisions, whatever. Uh and then Brad, Co- Brad Scott comes here and goes, oh, yeah, but Laura Kane got on the old dog and bone there. Yeah, he says, yeah. nah, we screwed that one. It, nah, that one was ruined as well. Real bad, man. We're real sorry, Brad. Push, bang. But then to follow it up the next day, our man, Andrew Gillen Dillon, goes, nah, man, the umpiring's as good as it's ever been. So that's the last oh, bit of news up. here. Andrew Gillen Dillon, the man with the $2 haircut, CEO of the <laughs> AFL, can't get a haircut but can apparently run What's an with your giant, haircut? giant AFL corporation league and clearly has just gone, where's my head going to be with this horrible haircut? It's going to be firmly implanted very, very far into the sand. So you're wondering where <laughs> yeah. I was going to go with yeah, that. I yeah, I, yeah, I was. But this is <laughs> ridiculous, work. which also leads us into the midweek winners and losers of the week in the middle of the week. The man with a $2 haircut getting dunked on left, right and centre. So Andrew Dillon comes out, he's like, I'm boring as good as it's ever been. Is he alright? I don't football. think he watches footy even though he runs the comp. Well, I mean, there's a lot of schmoozing you got to do at these events. Like, you've been to these events, Stats Boy. Have, you've I done have. a lot of schmoozing. You're a big schmoozer. Yeah, no, he not, as a, he's he's got, not as much as you. Not as much as the guy to my right. Hey, what the hell, schmooze. man? <laughs> yeah, Stat- in fairness, I've got a meeting with the AFL tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you are basically <laughs> schmooze boy. That's how you roll. Yeah. Okay. Andrew Dillon. We saw you at that final trying to side up to Gil. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're, we're like this. A little we're bit like this. too late, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Dillon, though, just sitting there going, nah, look, I'm schmoozing. I'm not watching any of this game. Like, just maybe watches, like, the uh, cut-up highlights at the end of watches the game. Watches the three-minute KO, 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 KO Mini. The KO Mini. He loves a good KO Mini. It is ridiculous to be like, oh, that's great. This is quite literally the yeah. best umpiring has ever been. You could very clearly just go, we can always improve That's exact, on what we're doing. Like the old political sort of stance where he goes, I think it's good, but we can definitely improve. We can that, do better. That's all he had to say. 
you know, like every single, I don't think. It's literally every performance review I have, it's like, you can do better, Alex. <laughs> There's, From a, him. there's a lesson there. <laughs> <laughs> that was the joke. I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of this. Ooh. The vibe, though, is very simply just like, hey, there's bro- not a fan base in the AFL who's like, you know what's awesome this year? The umpiring. Well, never, there's never anyone is going to say, oh, that ump- game was umpired great. But if you don't but notice them, it's that, better. That means yeah. it's been umpired great if you don't notice it. And yes. that's, you never want to notice no, it. That's yeah, the entire course, thing. The fact that it's been such a kid. Like, we talk about AFL bingo and news bingo like each year. And it's like, all right, what are we going to roll the- Red roll. card, state of origin. We talk about state of origin. We'll talk about time on. We'll talk about- Umpires. We should yeah. draws. We'll talk about umpires. Yeah. Right? Week on, week on, week. Haircuts. It feels like every two weeks Those we're just like, oh my God, we've got another horrible example of really bad umpiring. <laughs> yes. And for Andrew Gill and Dylan to come out and be like, nah, man, what are you talking about? It's like, he's basically gaslighting us. He's like, no, what are you talking about? The umpires are fantastic. That's a very good You're wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. You're not watching footy correctly. Does this like, now wait a minute. Come, come down to the AFL umpires need to be full-time because it's the umpires have come and said, they are. we don't want to be full-time because we enjoy the, the lifestyle and freedom that we have outside of footy. It's like, mm. you can still do another job. I'm not stopping Most, you from yeah, doing like full-time, Uber. I think. No, they're not. not. What are you doing? I know but, lots of them are teachers and things like that. But, but, but that's what I mean. It's like... Mm. If you are not doing well at your job and this is you are in charge of umpiring yeah. one of the – let's be honest, it is a very confusing game, but a great game. Shouldn't you be full-time given the professionalism and standards of the AFL? Because I don't think that yeah, maybe. an NBA umpire or an NFL umpire are on weekend on during the week going, right, our kids, seven plus six. Yeah, that's true. That's where you're kind of actually funnily wrong. NBA yeah. are full-time, obviously, because there's yeah. a million games. Yep. But NFL, they were always sort of like these weird – they've only just gone professional. Really? So for years and years, it's like, I'm also a lawyer during the week. You're like, what are you do- – why are you also jacked? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> actually, it's crazy. That, is that because there's only like – was it 16 weeks? Yeah. Exactly. There's only 18 weeks 18 in weeks. the season. Yeah. Okay, so baseball yeah. umpires. There exactly. You baseball umpires, you're always going. NBA, okay. same sort of thing. Ice hockey too. <laughs> Let me zag for a second though. Yeah. <laughs> He's, already, he's zigged. But no, Let me yeah, zag. Yeah, zag. I love a good zag. <laughs> they man with a $2 full. haircut. He's like, you know how we can actually be the most professional league in the world? We're just going to start acting like the NFL. This is awesome. Everything's Ooh. fine. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Are we going to get a team in <laughs> Las, all good. Las Vegas? They're going to start going, you know who's in under-inflating balls? Dustin Martin. We're just going to drag his good name through the mud in his last season or something. Aww. We're going to throw one coach under the bus. We're going to get some sort of like big thing going on as well. This is literally the racing New South Wales approach to horse races. Like, everything's great. Nothing's wrong here. It's like country races, like oh, guys, um, our tracks are stuff we fix up. But Ramwick's awesome. Like the NFL go, you know who the actual problem is? Colin Kaepernick. Like that's <laughs> oh, exactly geez, where yeah. Andrew, Gill- Andrew Gill and Dylan's going to go. I know an exact You know what the worst part about the a- AFL is right now? Tell you what, you know, I reckon it <laughs> might actually be Jordan Boyd. And you're like, what? <laughs> Jordan Boyd. <laughs> Jordan Boyd's like, what the hell did I do, man? Anyway, and that comes the other midweek winner. Jordan Boyd got off. Justice was served. I, I loved every second of that. That was one of the most weird, bizarre MRO decisions mm. you'll ever see. Where it's like, yo, he very clearly ducks in. Jordan Boyd's trying to stop. And he ducks into the dude. Yeah. What are we doing here? Yeah. Why are we wasting time with this sort of stuff? And, and why does that one get through there? Yeah, it was four hours. So four we can get into that later. They need well, a danger field just to get up there and give a soliloquy. And away yeah, we a go. game is shorter than, than the tribunal when it was clearly. David Zeta's clearly, just woken up. David Zeta tried the. Uh, he's very, very Schnitz funny. on, on a stick. He's like, it looks horrible. Schnitz got to it's do just a piece of schnitzel piece of with, with the stick. skewer stats, yeah. guy. It just looks horrible. It's not that hard to figure out. There's some seasoning or something. It just looks crap. Anyway, good job, Jordan Boyd. <laughs> Not a war criminal. No. Let's do some Yenars. Midweek Yenars. Ah, uh, should Jordan Boyd have gotten off? Yeah. 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 Of course he should have. Yeah. That's definitely like the one we thing we go. We did a poll go- actually on our, well, I did a poll on the AFL today. It was 60 40, surprisingly, on the uh, poll. That so we got of, five votes. That, it was four yeah, four <laughs> yeah. People said yes, he should have gone off. 40% Collingwood fans. Yeah. Uh, and there was lots of votes on Ben Long should have been fine for hitting Brain and Maynard. Yeah, nah. Nah. He should be given money. Yeah. Yeah. Knighted. For hitting, knighted. Knighted for yeah. hitting Brody <laughs> it, it should have been Ben Long Day on the Gold Coast. And when I say hitting, kind of like glancingly pushing. Yeah. Like, it's not even a Pendle's like Quapang or yeah. a Lockie, Lockie Neal punch. Or a Zach yeah, it was Butters. a lot. Yeah. It was just like a bit of a, oh, yeah, get out of here. Don't argue. And Brady Maynard's like, sir, I've been <laughs> shot. I've been shot. Collingwood fans go, oh, but it hurts so much when you're not expecting it. It's like, ah. So now Braden Maynard knows what it feels like. Well, Collingwood fans know they get hit a lot. They're just walking around. <laughs> War criminals. <laughs> uh, that's the big one we also asked already. Dusty should go to the Gold Coast. Nah. Yeah, nah. yeah this would be fun. 
It would just be cool. I'm going to say nah. Just retire a tie. No, I don't care if Gold Coast is success, successful or not. So yeah. The AFL tribunal process is too long. Yeah, nah. In what? In what? what I just put mean? it in there as in last night went for four hours. That is ridiculous. That's not anyone's fault, but it's the idiots deliberating around the table. I don't know. I feel like uh, you follow like David Zeta's things. He's just gone. We've just gone around in circles. They always they get like uh, people. We're well, not witnesses, but people to come in on on Zoom calls and things like that. Just make it, it a bit more the simple. Clubs make ten it... grand to go to the tribunal, so they're getting their money's worth. Yeah, I don't know. Just you both sort are on pub test. Pub we test. just get yeah. a select few are out of pub. <laughs> We're having a few tins. That's so a like, great call. Should you get suspended for that? What do you reckon? Oh, geez. What did he do again? Oh. <laughs> to be fair, 90- nah, that's fine. What are you talking about? Everybody gets off. Yeah, 99% of pub tests would be, he just hit a like, oh, but you could do that back I in mean, the day. Yeah, just back in the day, Craig Bradley would have done that in the twos in South Australia. Exactly. What are you talking I feel about? like there'll be no suspensions ever. No, there would be because there'd be certain biases against players. Yeah, true. Wait, where's the pub? Can't be in Collingwood or like Carlton because they're going to yeah, be we'll too biased. Yeah, we'll find a neutral venue. We'll go to Fitzroy. Fitzroy? <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. I'm back. That's a good call. I was going to say, go to South Melbourne. South Melbourne. I did have to explain to the squid uh, that Carlton, Fitzroy and Collingwood are all next to each other and they all used to have football teams well, all next, uh, yeah, yeah. as part of the inner city sort of uh, yes. part. And then, you know, you have Richmond right there as well, but yeah. that is sort of separated a bit by A little bit, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he's like, well, there's one in Fitzroy. It's like, yeah, what were they called? The Lions. He's like, but that's Brisbane. I had to explain <laughs> the concept of a merger to him. It is weird. And he was very confused. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> it does look crazy now in 2024 that we lost a team. We had a South Melbourne team move to Sydney, yep. et cetera. Yep. Uh, but the fact of like how many teams were struggling for cash yeah. at that it point. It was sad, yeah. And now like, the game North has almost to went to Gold Coast. Yeah. The game you, is know, now- you tried to go to Sydney. Yeah. I'm glad we didn't. The game has now gotten to a point where it's very healthy and there is a lot of money around there. Yes. And meanwhile, Stats Boys team still stinks and he's poor. <laughs> uh, no, we're not poor. We just stink. Yeah, you no, you're poor because you're giving all your money to Alistair Clarkson. <laughs> yeah. You're not as poor every, as St Kilda. I love that he's like accounting. Uh, is like every dollar that comes into the ruse is like, I'll have 85 cents of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just skims it off the top. Away we go. Give the rest to out of you. He's basically running like a mob racket. I love it. <laughs> anyway, let's do the fan survey. 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 Fan survey. We're going to the survey. Check this out. <laughs> survey. I'll have a cheek roll and a chalky milk. Thanks, Mac. I'll go pipe. The fan verdict <laughs> survey. The fan survey that the AFL ran. Let's do some quick yeah nahs on the results of this show. I feel like they didn't survey enough people because it was only 33,000. We surveyed 000. six people. <laughs> it's like surely you should do like just get everyone at the MCG for like when Pendles plays his uh, 400. That's 100,000. Just like, all right, let's feel We should have done this like family feud. We've surveyed 100 people and you have to try and guess the top answer. Wow. That'd be good. That's a reach. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, the Just stats whatever. guy's family feud all the time, huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. he, Karen, and Mark just sit around yeah. the tally each night. Yeah, but it's Karen and Mark against stats guy. It's not a fair no, fight. I don't have Karen to talk and about Mark my family. That is, just, that is a bit weird. Your parents rule. Yeah, they do. Right. Let's do it. The fan survey. <laughs> what should the sub rule be? Five on the bench, no sub. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 47% nailed Massive, that. Yeah. I love that one. Keep it as is, 36%. What are you doing? As how is 36%? That's people saying keep it up. Why are 30% just going, nah, we no, We this. like when debutants are on the bench for the first So game. dumb. Yep. Five on the bench, dumb. no sub. Yep. If a 20th AFL, AFLW club was to be introduced after Tassie, where should it be based? Northern Territory, yeah, nah. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. NT. That, was that the most? Yeah, that was the most voted. I'll see you in the NT. Uh... 52% said the Northern Territory. We don't need an 20th team, says 18%. I'm leaning towards that, actually, if I'm on the poll. Like, Why? We, we don't need, need it. We don't need another team. That's a coward's way out. We don't need boy. another team. There's we too many did. teams. Can that means we're going to have good. We can get rid of North Melbourne and St Kilda and back to 18. Right. And bro. Sounds good. 13%. No. <laughs> Western Australia, 9%. Don't mind that having a third team out west. Yeah. Um, Western Australia or Adelaide. Adelaide is mm. at 4%. Northern Queensland, 4%. Not Northern. No. no. There's already in North Queensland. If you go to North Queensland, you may as well go to the Northern Territory. It's yeah. like North Queensland. You've you got other stuff to do. Who, wants, to, who wants a Rockhampton AFL Canberra, team? Canberra would be okay. No, it wouldn't. It Can't. sucks. <laughs> Should the AFL introduce extra time for drawn games in the home and away season? No. Yeah, nah. Uh... Yeah. yeah, I agree that it should be a no. Oh, he nailed gets, the double that gets confusing. Uh, I'm saying, yeah, that we need extra time. Give us extra time. I hate no. you. No. no. Should the AFL introduce a send-off rule? Just, I love that. This is the bingo. They're doing the bingo. Yeah. No, 58%. Yeah, nah. Agreed. I reckon if we've got I'm five on, on the that one, interchange, yeah, nah. I'm actually happy to send someone off. If it's egregious, yeah, oh. off. So, but okay. what, we have so many things. Ha, ha, what's going to be the decision so, to send someone I, off? This is, this is the one this year. It's your Braden Maynard. All right. right. Off. So if Peter, Peter writes one, which is probably one of the big ones this year, for what he did to Harry Cunningham, is that a send-off? Yes. Okay. Head, no, oh, basically, I think, no. You know what this actually does? I think no. it makes it a lot easier in the MRO because what you can go, 
it's essentially really so it's egregious. like a red card in the APL stats guy. Egregious uh, hand, I like it. high contact. Away we go. Stuff like that. If you do something very uh, deliberate, where you've punched a dude in the face, etc. I think yeah. I think the only one I is think if you punch someone. There's quite it? literally a line where we go. This should be send off territory. And I think it should so be very easy. So what about last sort. year when Nank elbowed that dude in the face like, and went bang and yeah. got three weeks for it? That's no. a send-off. That's a send-off. I agree with those ones, but not like like a tackling to the ground. Because oh, no, you no, can't no, tell no. like, yeah. Anyway, so that's why I think there's too much conjecture on what is and what isn't. No, so basically I think, should I be having it there as a threat is awesome. So okay. if you do something stupid, you're gone. Fair enough. Has the score review on the use of technology improved the game? Yes, it's important to get decisions right. 73%. Uh, no, leave it to the on-field umpires. 27%. Has it actually improve the game. Yeah, no. Slightly. Yes. Slightly. Because it's it's been annoying, but it has helped. They do get to the right decision. Remember how they just went, I don't know, what, round four, they're like, oh, wow, we, everyone hates this. We need to speed this up. Sped it up, and we've never yeah. talked about it again. Actually, yeah. that's a good point. Amazing. Very good point. Uh, is footy better to watch than 10 years ago? <laughs> no, 40%. 10 years ago. Uh, <laughs> People are insane. I think, 38% yeah. say yes. No. Is footy better to watch? That is amazing. Of course footy's better to watch than it was 10 years ago. Oh. There is so much more talent than there was 10 years ago. Think of the flood. Think of the Ross Lyon flood. Yeah, it's, it's true, absolute it's chaos. True. There is so much more score. Well, there's much more balance, obviously, it's right true. now in this specific instance this year. Also, 10 years ago, think about it. GWS and Gold Coast had just come into the competition. Exactly. Every- 10 years ago, North were good. So maybe for me. So you maybe, should be saying. I'll say I'll, no. I'll say no because we were in the finals then. But. Swans were still playing in grand finals like they were currently. So. What do you think of the current length of games? Four times, 20-minute quarters plus time it's fine. on. Perfect. Like it. Perfect. 88% say yes, I agree. Who is the best player in the AFL right now? Marcus Bontempelli say 41%. Interesting. Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yeah. If you, go, if you go to everyone and go, you have to pick one player to play the game of his life for you. Yeah, you got you got to go Bond. I think. Yeah, he just plays a lot of around a lot of crap players. Yeah. They would have lost to North, I reckon, us on the weekend if they didn't have Bond. He just he's too good. That's why he's the best. Yep, one man wrecking crew. Don't mind it. Well, who are you going? Cripper. Ah, uh, Cripper. That's not a bad shout either. Which of these players who are all twenty one years and under will be the best player in five years time? Which is a weird Ooh. just question. Which of these players 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 twenty one years <laughs> years years? Well, write my- your questions correctly. Nick Dacos, twenty five uh, forty five percent. Whoa, Hardy Reid, Bam Lamb at 26%. Hardy Reid, Sam Darcy at 9%. That doesn't work as well. I better stop singing. Uh, Will Ashcroft at 6%. Hornet at 4%. Sheasel, 3%. The Sheasel should be higher. 3%. My, my player isn't even on this list. Oh. Errol Goulden. He's 21. Is he 21? Yep. Okay. Errol Goulden. That's, no, that's a fair shout. Yeah. Errol Goulden. Maybe people just forgot because he's that good already. Errol Goulden. Oh, you gotta, you got to say Dacos. I think he'll be have a better career than Goulden. Going with Errol. Future blue, Harley Reid. Uh, <laughs> who is the best coach in the AFL? Craig McRae. Ooh. They call him Flea, I've heard. Uh, 31%. <laughs> John Longmire, 21%. Voss, 10%. Clearly, of the 33,000 respondents, There's a lot of 10% Carlton of fans. them were Carlton <laughs> Yeah, fans. I agree. Whoa. Well, to be fair, 31% could have been Collingwood fans. They have a lot of fans. Granted. It's clearly the guy who's got the team two games clear on top of the ladder at the moment. It's jo- Right now, it is John Longmire. Over the last decade, oh. it's probably John Longmire or Scott. Craig McRae got him from pretty much the bottom of the ladder to This a is flag. the dumbest I, question. I'm Who, saying Craig Which McRae. coach has the best nickname? It's still John Longmire. Horse. Like, horse, awesome. yeah, horse, yeah. Let's do it. Some of the best ones. Who is your favorite play-by-play commentator on TV? Hutto. Has to be Hutto. 23%. That should Hello, be. Bruce Jr. Good on you, buddy. On you, mate. <laughs> BT somehow gets 17% because apparently they gave Brian Taylor and his extended family 17% of the vote. <laughs> That is chaos. I told you guys that more people will like BT than, than we think. And I don't like him, but yeah. are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> James Brayshaw somehow is 15% as well because, I don't know, I don't apparently 15% him. of people have had a head knock oh. just recently. Uh, Dwayne Russell at 9%. Fine. Matt Hill, 8%. Luke Darcy, 6%. Underrated Matt Hill. I agree with that. He should be The worst above. one that kills me is Alistair Nicholson's only at 4%. Yeah. Uh, that's Howie, because he, Howie has beaten out Alistair Nicholson. <laughs> Howie is sitting there going, how can I be mates with all these blokes? Oh, this is great. <laughs> Alistair Nicholson is just an awesome commentator. It's, it really should be Hutto, Matt Hill, Nicholson, and then even Jason Bennett. But it's because He's if fantastic. I go, yeah, Jason Bennett and Alistair Nicholson, if I go on the street and do an interview and right now, what? people wouldn't even know who the hell Alistair Nicholson Where is. Where the that's hell is Paps? That's right. Yeah, but well, he only does one. He one does two a week. week. One or does two? He? Yeah. Oh, nice. Who's your favorite expert commentator on TV? Hodgy gets 15%. <laughs> Our very good friend, Luke yeah, Hodge. Our friend. <laughs> friend of the program. And uh, Matty Richardson at 13%. Again, <laughs> speaking of head knocks. Yeah, uh, how's he that? My, my good mate, Jason Dunstall, Chief, 12%. Only does like one game a week as well. Not bad. Bucks at 10%. David King, 8%. 
Dale Thomas, sneakily good at times. Yes. Has these incredible insights. He's pretty he funny sometimes. Into I, I, like so him. Yes. I like him. He has like a bit of that. Uh, he was on Triple M, right? Yeah, yeah. he's on Triple M. Every so he has week, like yeah. a hint of that Triple M uh, jokiness to it, but also delivers the goods. He should be higher than 7%. I agree. Especially agree. considering that Joel Selwood, <laughs> speaking of head knocks, is at 5%. Like what? That, how's he above? Uh, well, five percent of the respondents are very clearly oh, Geelong fans, or, and they might Selwoods. actually they might actually all be Selwoods. There's yeah. a lot so, of Selwoods. Yes, it's Scott, it's Tim, it's Jack, it's yeah. <laughs> Nathan, <laughs> uh, Shane, Daryl. Uh, <laughs> yes. How do we get another Daryl reference? Any on bets? He's on a studio show. And he's got four percent. Anyway, uh, who is the best one? Chief. I actually Dale Thomas has been really um, really good. Chief is fantastic because he takes no guy. I, I love listening to Bucks. Yeah, he's I like Chief genius. and Bucks, but. I, I'm a I'm a fan of Derm. I know a lot of people hate Derm. Oh, I can't stand I Derm. enjoy Derm. We talked about this before the show. I've got a lot of time for Derm just because he's just like me. Just keep talking. Something, <laughs> yeah. something good will eventually happen. <laughs> we hope. Maybe. And then the show ends. It might just be four <laughs> quarters of absolute I, moron I'll just rambling, but we'll I get I will there. forever remember Derm last year when the Giants beat the Swans on the siren. The, the, uh, the ball up. Before the ball up, they're all getting around and getting ready for it. And Derm's like... Watch Toby Green. Look at his positioning. He is going to be moving. And it was just bang straight down to Toby, Toby yeah, goal. Yeah. And he's just like, no, he's like, smart. How would you leave Toby Green with three meters of space to move into? He's like, why wasn't someone blocking him? It was like, he's smart. It yeah. was just, yeah. He's got footy smarts, but he just doesn't stop talking. And, I enjoy when he goes, North I enjoy when he goes when someone does something right. He's like, yeah, good boy. Yeah. He's like yeah. everyone's uncle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uncle to him. Yeah, he's like, like, he's just sitting on the back of the ute with a ciggy and a beer <laughs> hanging out at country footy. He's yeah. like, Maybe. yeah, good boy. That was good. Oh, I see that one. <laughs> I taught him that. Oh, and then, and then he'd go up to them at quarter time and be like, if you just to improve your positioning like this, and then they do it, be like, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it. We are two thirds of the way through the AFL season, gentlemen. Yep. After round awesome. 16. Who wins the brown, though, if we give it out? Right now. Ooh. There is one correct answer. Yeah, it's Isaac Heaney. Patrick Cripps. George Very Wardle. clearly. No, I'm joking. Um, I, think Isaac, Heaney, I think Heaney as well. I think Isaac Heaney after 10 rounds will be on 23 to 25 votes. He's I mean, you can wait 10 that. rounds? We're up yeah. to 16. But Yeah, but that's the point. He's that far in front. Oh, I don't know about that. So I reckon he'd be on about 26, 27 by now. You're off Jeez. your head. That's a lot of votes. But it, I think I think we talked about this before. A lot of the trackers have him equal to Cripps. I think he's going to sneak another one or two in between there. That they I think he's I think for. he's ahead of Cripps by one or two because Cripps' yeah. has, Cripps' has last couple of weeks has been just ridiculously good. Yeah, and Heaney needs to lift and hope that Errol doesn't go psycho for him to win it. I think what you're both discounting is that Cripps is beloved. But you're also discounting how good Isaac Heaney's first month Heaney, was. He'll Heaney, be he'll be on twelve votes after four games. That's great. That's twelve in the bag. Okay. The rest of the way is going to be the, the sort of big problem, right? Because I think what you'll see is we've seen the emergence of Goulden. He's gotten back to his form from last year. We've yeah. seen Chad Chunley warner take over games. The weirdest thing I think for Sydney is that they're that good and they're that balanced. Heaney was that dominant that he might have a lead early on. I think once the sort of umpires go, hang on a second, this is like a big thing. Like Heaney's form has dropped a little bit. Yeah, uh, last month or so. By the yeah. same token, Cripps has been – I reckon he said like literally, quite literally, like one one to two, three, like kind of like quiet games. The yeah, rest very of them, rare, yeah. I've been stunned by how good and how consistent he's been. Because like, I don't know, you might have heard, I'm a betting man. But the vibe <laughs> has been like looking at this going, Crips 20 plus, oh, yeah, smashing it out of the park. Like just every he's time. Having, he's having a better year than his Brownlow year. Exactly. He got, he he got looked after in that Brownlow year that he He won. hasn't dipped below 21, Tani, and the thing that he's doing compared to Crips is hitting the scoreboard. Well, I think Cripps is also just out there going, hey, here's 40 on you. Yeah, here's 14 clearance. Uh, Dacos is still obviously, He'd I be- think he's the pick maybe down the stretch as uh, Collingwood sort of looked yeah. to run into some form and finish off the year. So, I mean, I feel like in terms of his odds, he's probably a little bit uh, underpriced Under. at yeah. the moment mm. because I agree. he could come home like As a, in you mean he's over the odds, like you should have something on him now. Yep, because yep. he could come home like a freight train. Uh, yep. Speaking Cripps, of freight trains. Ted last Walker? year's oh. last year's freight train, Errol. Errol Gordon. Errol, it came Here's the problem. Like the cannibalizing between Heaney, Warner, and Gordon might still I'd continue. S- see, I think Warner's ceiling is three or nothing, whereas Heaney and Gordon can very ones easily pick, twos, yeah. can pick up three two ones. Yep. And there's Bond. I don't, I'm still so bad for Bond. He, he's he going to finish like Brown, though. Is he ever going to get one? He's, he's going to finish fourth he's gonna again. Second again. A second again. Yeah, for like the third time. Also, 
Noah Anderson could be on about 20 votes at the moment too because he just last year we noticed that he got a lot of votes and was surprising. They've When they've won and six of their wins, he's been dominant. Mm. So there could be sort 18 of 15 votes, yeah. to 18 votes there. And there's a couple of games where they've lost that he's been really good as well. So he, he's, Sneaky up, up there, if yeah. there's a top five market and he's like $3, he's someone I want to have something on too. Nice. I think at the moment it's Gripper. I think we've got Heaney second. I would probably have Bont third, maybe just ahead of Dacos, just because of the simple fact he hasn't been wildly damaging. He's had like a couple of really standout games. I guess the thing is they've kept on winning and he's still been very solid for most of it. Mm. Right? So I don't know. It's a tricky one. I'm, Interesting. I'm Heaney, Cripps, uh, Dacos or Bont, one of the two. Yeah, I think Dacos, I think Dacos as well, he just gets votes from the umpires, but that he shouldn't. So he could be right up there. Yeah, nice. but they did have that slow start. All right, the Coleman. Coleman. Let's check in on this one here, Stats Boy, because my beloved Charlie Kerno. Charlie! Loves the Coleman. Leading the Coleman right now. He's already won two. Not bad. Ben King is on 42. I really want Ben King to win The this. J Train is on 37. Yeah, I think that's about to come to a grinding halt. Jesse yeah, Hogan's at 36. Fixture. And Harry Mackay, a.k.a. Harry McFive, could use a couple of bags of five, is mm. at 34. Who wins it from here, folks? Provided he doesn't get injured, well, Charlie Kern will win this by over 10 goals. I think, yeah, maybe not over 10 goals because both Gold Coast and Carlton, as we are looking here, have decently easy fixtures. So you got Kern should win, though. He's, he gets to play the Eagles, Saints, North, which he's going to kick bags against all of them, you, you'd think. North haven't been too bad at uh, defending, but I think he's going to kick a bag against all of them. Even GWS have been in horrible form, especially with no Sam Taylor. So I think Kern has to be the heavy favourite, but, but Ben King could be right up there. He gets to play... North. So uh, look at look at some of the defenses that Ben King gets to go yes. against here. So you North, got, yep. Port, who have been shot. Well, I actually didn't mention late. Port against Carlton as well. GWS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Taylor. Sam Taylor's probably back by then. Is he? They said he might be back next Either week. Either way, yeah. they haven't been defending that well. Yeah, but it's also if you're taking on like one of the best defenders mm. in the game, it's not a good day yeah. for you. Is he wearing like adult diapers at some point? Like know. what does he does he wear He's like a, a plastic? <laughs> <cup? laughs> oh. What does he do? I don't want to know. Jeez. Lions, sure, but then they have the Eagles, the Bombers, yeah, but the that's, D's but that's, and the that's Tigers. That's and McGovern. Love it. And then Love Water, it. Well, Waterman is cooked because he has to play Saints, Frio, uh, Blues, and Ly Lions and D's. Like, well, like I said, five of the top six. There's another so. hill coming for West Coast and they're about to go down the other yeah. side of it. So I think and Hogan it's, can't win and Harry can't win. It, it is literally, <laughs> provided Kerno he doesn't King. get injured, Kerno will get towards sort of 70 goals and win it. Kerno wasn't was, that good on the weekend. I think King still has a chance. Well, Kerno, the thing is they, they basically put him on ice early because yeah. they're like, you're fine, buddy. Yeah. 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 King needs to cash in against North Melbourne, West Coast, and then potentially Richmond in the last Richmond, round. Yeah. Like he needs, he needs probably two bags of at least six or seven to really sort of stamp his chances. I think the yeah. thing about Kerno this year is there's not been the massive, massive, massive bags. He keeps five against the cats. Much, yeah. The thing is, he's just been two, 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 four, three, three four. Two. Same as Ben King hasn't kicked a goal in one game, but every other game he's kicked two or more. But it's like five, two, three, four, two, three, 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 yeah. three. He's four, been three, so four, consistent. Three. So yeah, and he's kicking straight. He's kicked forty-two, thirteen this year. He kicked four, four against Hawthorne. So it's he's like, stolen his brother's powers and his brother's knees. He's, he's better than his brother, I think. Forty-five, twenty-seven for Kerno. He's winning the Coleman. Yeah. As long as he stays. Nah, I'm going, I'm going Ben King for the Coleman. Nice one. All right. That's some good chat. Enjoyed that one. Now, we've got a massive, massive Thursday team show tomorrow night. Why is it massive, you might ask? Leo's back. That's right. Social guy Leo. He's just going to talk about the wizard for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, he's beloved wizard. Josh Weddle. Yeah. Weddle, Weddle, Weddle. Uh, that is it for AFL Today for today, though. But AFL Today will be back tomorrow, of course, for the Thursday team's AFL Today on Thursday. That's tomorrow. Uh, so thank you to Alex for jumping on. Cheers, Jim. Uh, even if he's extremely wrong about Isaac Handy. And uh, the Stats Boy. <laughs> thank you. Well done, Liam McGillian. <laughs> Noted Ruse fan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Remember to smash a like across all the socials and see us doing lots of fun stuff during the footy season. Face the IG, X, TikTok, and, of course, YouTube. You can check out all of our other shows as well. Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia. Chock is with Boomers Gear at the moment yeah. and NBA Free Agency. Hold all tickets. One more episode One left. More show. Uh, oh, get sorry. around all Season's of those over. shows. Subscribe, star, like all of them on your podcast apps, of course. Do it or we'll send Stats Boy around to have a word. Yeah. He'll have a word. Get around him like Dusty getting around a nice froth on the Gold Coast. <laughs> Forex. After he's retired. There you go. <laughs> Boom. That's it. We'll catch you later this week for more AFL today. Till then, look after yourselves and remember, footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the
the other shows on the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.